Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 10, is where we resume today's study. Get your Bible, open it up to Second Chronicles chapter 15, and we will begin in just a minute. The scripture verse by verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. There you can study with me the entire Bible, verse by verse. Just choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, going back over 36 years to the beginning of Scripture verse by verse. All you need to bring is your Bible and a hunger for God's Word to the Bible, verse by verse, dot com. And Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. This, this gathering was about the time of Pentecost. The immigrants came to Jerusalem for the religious feast of Pentecost, which was a holy occasion for God's people in one of the three mandatory religious feasts throughout the year. Verse 11. And they offered unto the Lord on that day some of the plunder which they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their souls. And remember, Israel was a monarchy. But it was not just a monarchy at its root. It was a theocracy. In other words, God was Israel's king. 13. Let's read 12 along with it. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. This was the law because, again, they were not just a monarchy. They were not a democracy. They were a theocracy. God was their king. He was their ruler. So to disobey the law of God was to commit a crime against the state as well as a sin. They understood that there were some serious crimes that could be committed against God, and that would lead to the destruction of the nation. And so that's why there was the death penalty for not seeking God. When you turn your back on God, the nation goes down the drain. And that's the reason why it's such a strict rule that they laid out here. So if you didn't obey God, you had no regard for God, You were put to death. 14. And they swore unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with horns. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. And he was found of them. And the Lord gave them rest round about. And here we see what the key to happiness is in this life. When a person is dedicated to God, then they will be as happy as possible, given whatever hand they have been dealt. And this doesn't mean that everything is going to go well. But there is happiness and there is joy that transcends circumstances for those who belong to the Lord. 16. And also concerning Maaka, 
the mother of Asa the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an abominable, abominable image on an idol pole. And Asa cut down her idol, crushed it, and burnt it in the brook Kindred. Here you go. This is great. Asa was dedicated to God. And remember, Jesus said, if you don't put me before your family. In other words, he meant, or he said, if you don't love me more than your husband, your wife, your son, your daughter, your mom or dad, or whoever, then you cannot be my disciple. Jesus must come first. And Asa proved that Jesus was first. He proved that he was first with him because Asa deposed the queen mother, his own mother, off her throne. Actually, it was his grandmother. But he kicked her off the throne because she was an idolater. Asa then smashed and burned her idols. And Asa didn't care that this was shocking to people because he knew that it was the right thing to do. Asa put God first and God blessed as a result. 17. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. So Asa put God first, and part of putting God first in your life, if you are a civil leader, is to do your best to enact laws that line up with the Word of God. This idea that is so prevalent today, well, you know, I'm personally opposed to abortion, but I'm not going to shove my convictions on the rest of the country. Well, if you're not going to stand up for what you believe, then you're a sorry, pathetic government official, whatever your rank might, might be. Not only are you not taking a stand for what the Bible teaches is true, but you don't even stand up for what you say are your own personal convictions. What good are you? Lick your, lick your finger, stick it up in the air, and see which way the wind is blowing. That's, that's what a person like that does. That's, that's your classic politician. We've got enough of them. We need some statesmen who will stand up for what is right in the eyes of God. You said they won't be elected. I suppose not. 18. And he brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. And there was no war, no more war, unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Asa. Asa's respect for the Lord was seen in how he respected the house of God. And for that there was peace for 35 years. Let's go into chapter 16. In the sixth and 30, 30th year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. The prosperity of the southern kingdom and the purity of its religion was drawing good people from the north to the south. And the king of the north did not like that. So the king of the north built an ancient version of the Berlin Wall to stop the people from migrating to the south. You know, if, if, and this just, yeah, this reminds me of the Berlin Wall. Um, communist countries, it's so miserable in those communist countries that they have to make laws to keep people from leaving. Here in America, as bad as we are and have, as bad as we have become, um, you got to build walls to keep people from coming in. There's the difference. No freedom of religion in communist countries, so good people want to flee. Just like in the north, that people wanted to flee. They had to build walls, as it were, to keep them from going. 
2. Then Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, that dwelt in Damascus, saying, The south was wealthy, and here Asa sends some of that wealth to the king of Syria. Verse 3. Let there be a treaty between me and you, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you silver and gold. Go, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. And Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they struck Ijon and Dan, and Abel, Maim, and all the storage cities of Naphtali. Money talks. So Asa bought himself a friend, meaning the king of Syria, Ben-Hadad. Ben-Hadad turned against the north, their allies, because he took the bribe from the king of the south. So now the king of the north was forced to abandon his tax attacks on Asa in the south. Verse 5. And it came to pass when Baasha heard it that he stopped building Ramah and let his work cease. Baasha never got a chance to attack the south again because he died shortly after this happened. Verse 6. Then Asa the king, took all Judah. And he carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof, with which Baasha was building. And he built with them Geba and Mizpah. So Asa used the material that the king of the north had left behind to fortify his own cities. 7. At that time, Hanani, the seer, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord your God, therefore has the army of the king of Syria escaped out of your hand. Now, for the most part, Asa was a godly man, but he did wrong by relying on an old enemy, Syria, instead of asking God for help. This showed a real lack of trust in God, and one thing that bothers God is in when we don't trust him. That hits him right in his character. 8. Were not the Ethiopians and the Libyans a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because you did rely on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. In other words, God had proved to be trustworthy in helping Asa in the past. Asa didn't have to resort to political maneuvers when he had a God who could do anything and who had already shown that he was willing to help him whenever he was trusted. So Asa really blew this one. And we're going to stop right there. We got a good verse coming up. I don't want to wait till next time. In the meantime, study all of God's word with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. Now, if you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. And when you take a break from studying with me at the thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, Michael Moret for Scripture verse by verse. So long, everyone.